Radio Racing Hall of Fame on this beautiful afternoon. Plenty of sun. We've been blessed the last three years to, to have very good weather for this. Uh, my name's Ed Rosebrook. Uh, most people know me as Mitch. And uh, next to me, when Paul gets over here, is my partner in crime, Paul Crane. And uh, we got to thank Paul for everything he does involving snowmobile since he was the first American to ride to do back in 1959. So uh, thank you, Paul. And uh, we just have to uh, recognize uh, a few of these people here. And uh, if the uh, 2022 Hall of Fame inductees would please come and sit in the front row. The ones that are being inducted this year. Please have a seat. And uh, if, if the spouse is with them, I think there's enough room for a spouse or significant other. And uh, we, uh, we always, it's always been a tradition starting with our very first induction, and that is to thank those special people who have contributed much of their time to this endeavor. So my wife, Linda, she's my right arm. And uh, to Paul Twice Marilyn, who is, I think is in the museum. Uh, she does an awful lot to help out at this museum. And uh, board member Greg Allen behind the camera. Greg has provided us with a canopy here in the second floor. Since we've done these outdoor ceremonies, and uh, really, I think that's good, very much so. And uh, he, he's an expert at that camera, and uh, we can't be without Greg. And he is uh, a board member. And uh, Mike Lapierre, who's over there under that other canopy, under that other umbrella. And um, Mike has helped us in so many different ways. I, I could probably spend all afternoon counting them. He's uh, been right on board with us since, since the get go. Russ Quentin, our historian, will help fill in the gap. Uh, Russ has uh, compiled a, a bunch of the earlier racing magazines, so he has a lot of the data that we need to help uh, induct some of our um, Hall of Famers here. And Meredith Audette, who always comes with a beautiful camera, and she takes many, many great photos, uh, and she shares them with us each year, and uh, she does a very good job for us every year. And Elaine La Riviere helps, helps us too with the photos, and she's with Paul Lamontagne, who was inducted uh, a couple years ago. And uh, Alan Cormier for the sound system that he's provided us each year for this. And uh, last but lot, not least, finally a special, special thanks to our board member, Bruce Borovage, who even with a full plate of his own, has been nothing short of remarkable in searching for and compiling race records for future inductees. And I've talked with a few of the inductees, and, and Bruce calls them periodically to see how they're doing to make sure they're going to be able to make it. Uh, he spent a lot of time with, uh, with these inductees and, and to make sure that they would get their flights on time. And, and uh, I got a lot of phone calls with Bruce, and it's, uh, it's just uh, we can't be without Bruce Borovac. Please give an also a warm hand to our Eastern Snowmobile Racing Board of Directors. They have Greg Allen, who I mentioned before, Shane Biatti, who isn't here today, and uh, Bruce Borovac, who's also a board member, besides what, what else is the uh, Bob Martin, who's here today with us. Bob is a super inductee, one of the first to go on the wall back in 2017. And Ed Stapp, who uh, is not with us today, and uh, Ed is on the board this year. So, uh, and Bob Clark 
is over there, and he's a past board member, and he is uh, one of the inductees. In fact, he's the first uh, person to be inducted onto the wall in 2017, and he's over there. Yeah. So, uh, is, uh, Paul. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is another thing that we do every year. Uh, for people that have passed in our family and uh, people who have passed uh, from our Hall of Fame family. And uh, so let's please have a moment of silence for Kenny Young, who passed away this year, uh, is in the Hall of Fame, and for others who have passed away this year. We have with us today many past members of the Hall of Fame. Ruth and Mary Dunham came today. Uh, Herb Yancey's here. Uh, Ron and Terry Hall are here. Uh, J.R. Tozier is here. <laughs> Paul Montaigne and, and, uh, and a couple of other Elaine Byron is here. Lois Long is here. Diane and Jerry Baker are here. Bill and Kathy Abold are here. Dick Elwood is here. And as I mentioned before, Bob and Muriel Clark made it over from Vermont. And Steve uh, Dunoff is also here from Vermont. Uh, I don't know if I missed anybody or not, but I didn't mean to. Uh, you know, uh, we just announced who we expect is coming or think is coming. Um, I don't know if uh, Spencer, Beatty, and Lucas Nash are here today, but uh, they're going to race again at Eagle River. Lucas took seventh in the final in the four foot class last year. And uh, give those guys uh, a good hand for going like Eagle River is a beautiful sled this year. And uh, we got to thank the Lancaster Motel again for inviting us to their after party for the all the inductees, past and present. Just the inductees. I'm sorry, they, they can only do it for, for the inductees. But uh, it's the after party that they put on every year for us, and they do a great job. So they invite us over. And uh, so please go back and enjoy yourself. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And uh, yeah, they do a great job for us. And we'll begin our ceremony, as always, by announcing last year's inductees, and they are William Abel, Diane Baker, Robert Bottom. Wayne Elwood and Stephen Fennoff. <laughs> now we'll now begin our 2022 inductee in alphabetical order. Larry Beerman. You can sit there, Larry, and stay in the shade for as long as you want until we call for you because it's a hot day. So I'll have you come up after I finish reading your uh, race record here. Larry Beerman, inducted into the Eastern Stolfield Racing Hall of Fame 2022. Larry was the first Eastern Stolfield racer to earn. USSA's number one gold bib for the 1970 season by winning more races 
than any other driver in 1968 and 69. In 1970, Larry won the New York State Championship along with the Adirondack Cup, and he also won the Pennsylvania State Championship. While racing Spadoo in the 1972 World Series in Ironwood, Michigan, Behrman won all heat races and semifinals in Mod 2, but he unfortunately hit the wall in the feature. In Mod 5, his choke stuck on one cylinder during the feature, but Larry still came in third. Grabbing fifth in points for the Eastern Division in Mod 5 earned him gold bib number 11. Behrman was high points man for the 1972 and 73 seasons at the Wheat Sport Speedway in Wheat Sport, New York. Larry cleaned house at Cowder's Court, Pennsylvania in 1973 by winning in Mod 2, Mod 4, Mod 5, and 340 stocks. He went home with over $4,000 and still holds the average speed record on this half mile track in Mod 4 and Mod 5. Think about it, 60 years ago. For the 1972-73 season, Larry Behrman made history again by becoming the very first racer to earn two number one gold bets and is only the second person to do so by taking high points in Mod 2, Mod 4, and Mod in 5th in Mod 5. Larry was offered a spot as driver for the Alouette factory team by Jill Villeneuve in 1974 but he decided instead to become a USSA race director, which he was for the 74 and 75 season. Larry Behrman raced for Kostic Skidoo, he trains Motor Speed, and Elliott and Hutchins Skidoo, all New York distributors. He was regarded as the man to beat by his many competitors during the golden era of snowmobile racing. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Behrman. Thank you, thank you for everybody that showed up and for those that couldn't make it. When I was younger, to be number one was the only thing to do. Number two didn't count. <laughs> but at my age now, to be number one would be even better than when I was one year younger. But I don't think that'll happen anymore at my age. So I want to thank everybody again, like I said, that showed up for this. I want to thank Paul Crane for this beautiful museum and all the sleds he's got and the thought and the mind to put this together. I want to thank Edward Rosenberg for starting the Hall of Fame, which would have never happened in the West because they looked at us as cowboys just falling off a horse. We rode the horse better than they did. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank USSA for starting the organization, which all of a sudden just come to be. Nobody thought it was going to happen. They could pretty good. They were as big as it was. They didn't even get there. They had to scratch to try to get members to really get this thing going. And once it started, wow, did it take off. And I wish we still had something day like that for, for the younger people, but they'd rather be in one of the little buzz cars. You know. <laughs> I want to acknowledge and thank all my sponsors, Hodges Nursery and Fruit Farm. He was my first sponsor, which I was a fruit farmer, and who thought another fruit farmer would sponsor another fruit farmer? But he was a great guy. Glenn Downey, which Sport Speedway, sponsored me for one year. Elliot Hutchison uh, sponsored me. He and his speed shot. Milton Johnson and his partner did all the brain work on the scene. I more or less was a, a judge. The Dufresne brothers, AC Delco, Mark Free Oil. 
They were all my all my sponsors, and I want to thank all of them. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be here today. I mean, I worked hard a seven day week, a five day week on the slip. I'd come home Sunday night, Monday morning, I would be back to being at the sleep desk. Sleep repairing the flood down. And you gotta eat and sleep it to be a number one. Or to think you were gonna win this race. I didn't go to them in second. And that's what B and M was behind me and all of my other sponsors. And my two sons were the same way. I have a younger son, Scott, that has won uh, five national champions in go kart racing. And my older son is probably the best Yamaha engine builder in the state. And politics got into that too, and then what? <laughs> I want to thank Oscar St. Anne, who's my partner, for two years, for letting him be the baby. Tremendous driver and a really good guy. I would like to also thank my two sons for putting up with me all this time and all their support and my ex-wife. And for all the weekends I wasn't home. I mean, that was a lot of years, a lot of weekends. So I think everybody knows what, what that's all about. I want to thank everybody again for participating in the sport and for attending this uh, celebrity Hall of Fame. This really means more to me than anything. Larry Behrman, ladies and gentlemen. Our next recipient is uh, Anthony Butch Consolini. I forgot one thing. If it wasn't for all the board members, this wouldn't happen. And their knowledge to put this together. So thanks a million for all the board members. <laughs> I keep coming back because the mind isn't like it was when I was younger. There's a guy here sitting in the audience. I call him the Encyclopedia of Racing. Everybody knows who he is, Bruce. And if it wasn't for him, I'd still be trying to find my way out of the Manchester airport. He got me here. Give Bruce a big applause. Thank you. Bruce, uh, besides uh, being a, an expert uh, electrician, uh, also was a, an airplane pilot. And so it was a joke between me and Bruce that he was just going to have to get down there and fly him up here. You know, and he says, well, I can do that. So, but we got him here. All right. Uh, this is Anthony Butch Consolini, inducted into the Eastern Stoneville Racing Hall of Fame 2022. With much early success as an independent racer, Butch began racing in 1968 for the Tri-State Power Sled Team, a Skidoo distributor from Lee, Massachusetts. After making a name for himself in some of the smaller races around the state, Consolini's breakout moment came at the 1970 Massachusetts State Championship, where he took third in B-Stock, first in Mod 1, and first in Mod 2, making him the overall winner for the prestigious Governor's Cup. Butch grabbed the first place win in Mod 1 at the 1970 High Chaparral Races in East Jewett, New York, 
and kept up his winning ways by winning Mod 1 in both the Oval and the Cross Country, tying him with Bob Martin for the most points at Laconia International in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Well, from 1970, he wound up third in points for the Eastern Division in USSA. In 1971, Butch was unbeaten in Mod 1 at Plainville, Connecticut. At West Springfield, Mass, Consolini led the way in Mod 1 and grabbed the third in Mod 2. He took first place in Mod 1 and third in Mod 2 at Monticello, New York. With a second place finish in Mod 1 at Bangor, Maine, Butch continues his winning ways by garnering first place in Thompson, in Thompson Connecticut. After a second place finish in Mod 1 at Barry, Vermont, Consolini tied with Timberland Machines team captain Bob Horton for top points in Mod 1 in the Eastern Division of USSA with 78. Uh, and we know how Bob Horton was. And to, uh, to even tie the points for Bob Horton back then was been a tough thing. Driving the new 295 and 343 cylinder blizzard, Butch, Butch raced to five consecutive wins in Mod 1 at Canton, Connecticut. First at Scarborough, Maine. First at Bangor, Maine. First in both Mod 1 and Mod 2 at Lancaster, grabbing a Kilkenny Cup. And first in Mod 1 and Mod 2 in Northampton, Mass. Anthony was a force to be reckoned, reckoned with in the Mod 1 and Mod 2 classes. He was number one in points for the 1972 season in the USSA Eastern Division was 1812. Due to canceled events of a warm 1973 winter, he still wound up number one in points again in Mod 1 with 1,315 points, including a Mod 1 win at the Pennsylvania State Championship. Butch held the top points total three years in a row in Mod 1, competing in a class that totaled thousands of active drivers. He wore gold bibs number 20, 12 and 6 during his totally dominating career. And uh, it's, it's just a pleasure because I, I remember watching Butch race at Lancaster and uh, he was one of the best. So, Butch, please come on up here. First, I want to thank everybody for coming. Second, for the committee that has even considered uh, inducting me into this Hall of Fame, which to me is fantastic. To Mr. Crane for uh, building and set up that I can't even believe you could do it. It's fantastic. Other than that, there are a lot of people that without them, I would have never gotten to where I was or am today. I first bought my first secondhand Speedo from a moto ski dealer in our town named Dwight Ford. Unbeknown to me, he was a boat racer on the Hudson River. Him and I got quite a bond, and when he found out I wanted to try racing, I could not have had a better person to lean on. I ran a, a couple of times, worked on my sled, there's an inductee here that has worked on my sled, Ronnie Wimat, him, and Bobby Herman. They did some work for me in the earlier days when I was first getting started. Without them, it wouldn't have happened. Went to a couple of races, was very fortunate to do very good. And Mr. Fred LeGrant asked me if I was interested in putting my sled on their tractor trailer just about knocked me over. Uh, that wasn't even a question that needed to be asked. After that, I worked for them and uh, drove for them. I still took care of my own sled, uh, but uh, Mr. LeGrant uh, had quite an operation at Tri-State Power Sled, the distributor for Bombardier. And we, he was like family. Him and his wife were like family to 
myself, my wife, and my family. We traveled around and went to a lot of different places. And uh, I'll tell you, I don't even remember half of these things that they just said. It's been so long ago. But uh, it was great to be inducted, and I really appreciate it. And the only other thing I want to do is thank my family that came today. I was surprised. I didn't know that they were all going to be here. And uh, also, the person that up with all of this, my wife, who she is sitting over here in the shade because she can't be out in the sun. So them, I owe an awful lot. Thank everybody. Thank you again. Thank you, Bob. And if you look the photo on the plaque, I think he could have been a double for Frankie Avalon. <laughs> Pretty handsome uh, little Italian right there. If it wasn't for the women, these guys wouldn't be racing. Push Consolini, ladies and gentlemen. Our next inductee is Ronald Ronnie Women, racer promoter, inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame 2022. Ronnie Women owns one of the nation's oldest snowmobile dealerships established in 1965 with motor ski, and he won the very first Adirondack Cup in 1966 on this famous brand. As a new Skidoo dealer while racing out west for Tri-State Distributors in 1968, it was here that Ron was introduced to a prototype of a Yamaha snowmobile. Yamaha invited him to try two of their prototypes on snow back in Massachusetts. However, after he gave them a failing grade for very poor snow flotation, Ron was then commissioned by Yamaha to use his parent company H&R Machine to redesign the problem. His store became the first Yamaha snowmobile dealership in New England in 1969. Ronnie grabbed second in stock C, second mod two, first in mod three, and second in mod four at the Berkshire Hills Championship in Pittsfield, Mass, and won stock D at the Massachusetts State Championship in 1969. Now racing for the Yamaha factory team during the 1970-71 season, Ronnie took a first place trophy in Mod 5 at Scarborough, Maine, second place finishes in both Mod 3 and Mod 4 at the Eagle River World Championship. He also won the 440B main event at the West Yellowstone Roundup. During the 1971-72 season, Ron won Mod 1 at West Yellowstone, took another first in Mod 5 at Scarborough, Maine. Ronnie's racing skills and mechanical expertise provided him with many first and second place finishes during the 1973 to 1975 season, earning him a number six gold bib in professional snowmobile racing. He took two seasons off to work at H&R Machine, making pipes for the Brutans of Snowmobile Company, as well as many parts for several top racing teams. But it was in 1978, at 42 years old, when Ronnie showed, up, showed us he still had it by winning in both Superstock 3 and Mod 3 at Troy, New Hampshire, on his beloved Yamaha. Ladies and gentlemen, a pathfinder, Ronnie Whitman.
like to uh, summon the guy that got up here first and spoke. <clears throat> he has some extra to say. I don't have a lot extra to say. But it was, uh, I would also like to thank the people at the Train Snowmobile Museum, Bruce, and I can't pronounce his name very well, but it's something like over or something. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a, a wonderful time in the snowmobile business and uh, in doing racing. There are people here who have come up here to pay respects to the people who have raced, who have had a wonderful time at it and enjoyed it, and then to be awarded on top of that. Um, I really don't have much else. Thank you very much. Right away, ladies and gentlemen. Our next inductee is James Saul, inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame 2022. Jim first began racking up wins in 1967, racing snow jets for a local Pennsylvania dealer, who then offered him a ride on a 650 snow jet honker at a race in Orchard Park, New York. He was leading the race when he fell off. Gathering himself up, young soul jumped back on, caught the pack, and won the race. After a few successful seasons of racing snow jets, Stoll was offered to race the Polaris brand. He so dominated Pennsylvania in New York snowmobile racing on his TX machine that the fans nicknamed him the Flying Farmer. During the first race of 1970-71 season, Jim Salt took first place in Mod 1, Mod 2, Mod 4, and took second in Mod 5 at Monticello, New York. At Homesdale, Pennsylvania, Stoll won Mod 2, Mod 3, in the Mod 5 event, Jim nearly left the field and won going away. He won every race he entered at Corey, Pennsylvania, taking first in Mod 1, Mod 2, Mod 4, and Mod 5. Jim won both the Pennsylvania State Championship in Homesdale and the New York State Championship in Boonville. He amassed a point total for the season of 318, more than doubling the second place point total of 150. Jim Soule was presented with the USSA Driver of the Year trophy by none other than Bob Eastman. On a side note, his racing budget for the entire 1970-71 season was $5,000. Today's racers could not even build a competitive engine for that. Soule had won what can only be described as one of the most incredible seasons in USSA history winning a total of 25 times, finishing second dozens of times, and third only once. In 1973, he outdistanced 170 drivers to win his second Chattaqua Cup in Mayville, New York. Jim Soule raced until 1976. He came out of retirement in 1994, winning several more races on snow jets and Arctic cats. He retired again in, 20, in 2006 at age 60 amid cheers of relief from his much younger competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Salt. I'd like to thank uh, the Eastern Snowmobile Hall of Fame for uh, inviting me up and inducting me. I'd also like to uh, thank my family and my other half, uh, Claudia. She came with us and she set this up for me last night. They surprised me by when I pulled into the uh, restaurant, my daughter and my son-in-law showed up there. So they, they uh, 
kind of surprised me. Took my cousin along with us. We picked him up at, in Buffalo and brought him up to, to go with us to see the induction. I'd like to uh, thank Dick Kennedy, my friend of 60 years. He went to most every race I went to. Helped me work on sleds all weekend. Uh, didn't get a whole lot of credit, but uh, that was my friend, and he's still my friend. Dick Coos was the, the uh, dealer that I start, first started to uh, ride for. I rode motorcycles after I got out of high school, and uh, he's the one that taught me never never look back. I got a, I raced him a couple times. He was very good, and I seemed like I was a little better, and uh, I really cut tech from him because we were racing uh, scrambles and I turned around and I looked back and I went he was behind me and went like that and I said next time don't don't ever don't ever look back so I, I never looked back Billy Kane was the uh, the uh, distributor for snow jet and I started riding snow jet for Billy Kane Tony Jensen uh, senior was uh, the owner of Tony Jensen Automotive, they helped uh, work on the floods. They were real good on, on motors. Bob Eastman, of course, uh, gave us a lot of ins and outs. Bruce, Bruce has been great keeping us informed on coming up here, and when to be here, and how to get here, and everything else. Uh, thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Homer Kazrang, which is the past now, he owned the uh, uh, Bur a. H. Burley Company, which was a distributor for uh, uh, Polaris. Uh, Bob Best was a uh, salesman for them. I'd like to thank all my fans and anyone else that I forgot to uh, mention. When I first started racing uh, in my teens, the food that was on a motorcycle, well, yeah, I got pretty good on a motorcycle, I guess. And, uh, Billy Dean was the uh, distributor, so he sent the first honker over here, and I took that down to uh, Orchard Park cleaned up down there after I got up after I fell. But it, sometimes you got to fall before you rise. Uh, race no jet for Jan Tony Jansen sent six sleds up to Erie one time for a cross country, and all these guys owned these sleds. Jansen worked on them all, and uh, he made them run good. So I'd get off of one sled, and the next guy would say, "Take mine, take mine." So I did that four or five times, cleaned up all the all the snow jets. Uh, Desires. Um, I grow grapes in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania for Welch Foods. And, uh, I was delivering grapes one night, sitting in the truck, and two guys are coming up to the truck, and I don't know who these guys are. Well, it was Homer Kazdrain, the owner of the early company, and Bob Best, the salesman, and they uh, wanted to know if, if they gave Coos the uh, dealership or Polaris if he would. Take it on, and they want to know if I would ride ride Polaris. So I said, "Yeah, I I would ride it." So they started me with uh, between Bob Eastman and them. They uh, they sent two playmates, two ninety five and a three forty up to for probably to let me ride, and I rode them on uh, in uh, uh, grass drag in uh, Corey, Pennsylvania. We won everything up there on the grass drag. Those little playmates would jump three foot off the ground and. I, sometimes I just kind of wheelie down through, so that's so how I got used to doing wheelies. We, we won those. Then we went over to Cory, another race. We went over to Cory. They gave me a 396 single cylinder, and we raced on a uh, uh, school track. It was flat, but the sides were, were quite high on each side. And every time I'd pass somebody, instead of passing them on the inside, I'd pass them on the outside, I'd go up over the bank. The people on the other side of the track thought I was flying, so that's when they gave me the flying farmer. We raced another race at, uh, on the flat track. The next day, they had a uh, they were building a new school. We raced on a on a field, and everybody told me, uh, "Watch out for Yancey. Yancey's out to get you." <laughs> so, Bob, I think you missed me. Anyway, we had a good time. Uh, we went to next race. We went to was Monticello. I took first in uh, mod one, second mod, uh, first in mod two, mod four. But I had Dick with me, and I 
I got to tell this little story about Dick. Dick would always go along. I'd say, hey, Dick, uh, let me use your handkerchief. And I open up the hood and he'd wipe my clutch off and I'd get all the grease and stuff off and I'd give it back to him. He says, I'm not your servant. So he went up and sat in the, in the bleachers, enclosed and heated. After I won the second race, he's right down there, grabbed my ski and said, you all right? Need anything? Need anything? And so we, uh, we had car trouble on the way down to Monticello, but uh, I ended up with a good day. We, we, we didn't have any uh, lights on the car. And it was snowing, so we had one guy on the left side with a flashlight, one guy on the right side with a flashlight. We made it to the race. On the way back, we made it as far as Binghamton. I had a flat tire, so I'd only made one three thousand bucks that weekend. They wanted to eat, so I said, "Well, we'll go to the gas station here and see if we can find a, a used tire." So we got a used tire, got that on the car. So I took them over to McDonald's across the street, and I gave each a, a cheeseburger and a small fry. So we headed home. But when I got home, I, uh, I bought my grandmother a new brand new car, a brand new uh, Ford Torino. Then we went on up to Boonville, won well, the Andrada Cup up there, beating all the factory sleds. I think the reason for beating the sleds is when we had motorcycles, we used to put bolts through the tires and uh, we could lay the bikes right down. They had so much traction, so much grip that you could lay the bike down, touch the handlebar. So I figured I'd do that with a sled. So I did that with a sled. I, I put a, uh, a three-cornered file on. I think it was before we had carbide, before we had studs. Uh, but I, it was an icy track that day. And it was, uh, I, I didn't have any problem staying in front of uh, I, I did run the Winnipeg to St. Paul one year. Uh, it was 52 below zero when we got there. The fuel factor made it about 150 below zero. And uh, it was cold. I took axes, took towels out of, the, out of the motel. So I went, we had to get up four o'clock towards the start line. I'd take uh, towels and stuff them in my uh, uh, pants to keep warm. I had a uh, stocking mask on, cloth one. I had a leather one on the top of that. I had a helmet with a full shield. And if you went like this, your lips would freeze together. So. That was my thing at uh, Winnipeg. I had the experience, but uh, didn't didn't go along. I, I mashed the sled up, uh, blew the motor up. Of course, I was running pretty good. I should have made a right. I made a left, and I stuffed the motor. And who was right behind me comes running in here a couple minutes later. Is Bobby. Well, he placed that day. I didn't. I had to come. So that was that was my Winnipeg to St. Paul. Uh, two years ago, we had the uh, uh, Mike Kemper uh, wrote a, an article in the Vintage Summerville magazine, and he wanted me to come to Weedsport to a uh, vintage uh, show. And Bobby and I were walking through the uh, pits, and this young young man comes up to me. He said, "Are you Jim Saul?" And I said, "Well, I could be." And I, I he said, "I've been holding this." Uh, Ticket. Just uh, he was hoping to get the, me to sign a program, and he'd been old since he was eight years old. Well, wow. it was 1971 uh, ticket. So I signed that, and that that gave me a great great feeling. In closing, I want to thank everybody again. Thank everybody for coming out today. I'd like to thank the board for nominating me and inducting me, and and uh, hope everybody has a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.
Our final recipient is, uh, is Timothy White. Inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame 2022. 17-year-old Tim White's first win was on a seven horsepower skidoo at the 1964 Lancaster Grand Prix. During the 1964-65 season, he began racing for the oldest snowmobile racing team in the history of the sport, the Lancaster Snow Drifters. In 1966, now racing for Roberts Motors Racing in Class B, White raced to a close second in points at the Grand Prix, took two first place wins in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, and grabbed two firsts and a third in Plymouth, New Hampshire. Tim took a first, third, and fourth in Class A to win the 1968 Vermont State Championship in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. White was the first snowmobile racer in history to capture both the Kawasa Cup and the Bourbon Cup in the same year at the 1968 Laconia International against Team Arctic's best driver. He raced his Class 1 250 cc skidoo to win two more big trophies at one race by winning both the Paul Bunyan Open and the Maine Governors Cup at Bangor, Maine in 1969, racing a Cassidy-built 1965 broke tax engine against others with much larger displacement engines as well as the Skidoo factory team. Tim began racing for Timberland Machine's Big T Skidoo team in 1970, scoring first place wins at the Balsam in Dixville, Nash, New Hampshire, and Berlin, New Hampshire. Timothy Gary White left the sport. He so dominated in 1971 after a horrific, unavoidable accident at the 19, at the Lancaster Grand Prix when another driver fell off his sled directly in White's path severely injuring his fellow competitor. He continued racing for the remainder of the season, but the effects of that one trying event was just too much, and he retired at season's end, taking along with it his amazing driving skill, which produced some of the finest, most memorable moments in the rich history of this great sport. Turn up, please, come on. This is Verna White. Tim White passed away in what, 20, 2012. I gotta say one thing too. Uh, Tim was a great friend of ours. I grew up with Tim. Huh? I can't hold together, guys. Right? Well, I guess I can speak on the live play. He would see my child with my dad and mom for the weekend and we'd take off on a Friday every week during the middle of the And we'd race all weekend machines and so he went to, went to racing for Timbaland machines and then Timbaland put a lot of work on his own machines which he didn't like that much but um, he was very dedicated to the sport he was very dedicated to the friends that he made in the sport and he leaves a really big legacy for his kids and I'm really proud to accept this Uh, if uh, if everybody would uh, maybe stay outside here for, for a few minutes while uh, uh, Grace gets the camera set up inside, we're going to drop the uh, 
the uh, curtain on uh, on the new induction on the wall there. And uh, Mike Lafayette is going in. We got to talk about uh, the DVD. Mike wants to say a few things too. He, yeah. he and I have been working on a DVD uh, over there, and it's on my my wife's table at the T-shirt table. And this DVD is uh, it's a what did you call it? A it's a time capsule. It's a, a it's it was an eight millimeter film of the 1971 Grand Prix, and uh, it, it's like if you're if you're interested in in uh, looking at how it was back in the early 70s, if you're interested in how the sleds looked when they were brand spanking new, if you want to see a brand spanking new King Cat four cylinder, if you want to see a brand spanking new TX. 650 and 800. If you want to see brand new blizzards, brand new snow jets, when they were only a couple of months old, you, you got to get this DVD. And at the end of the DVD, they, we have a small segment of the Malone World Series over in New York in 1973. And uh, it, it, there's so many people on these DVDs that we now miss. There's Bob Fortin on there. Uh, Bob Eastman is on there. My uncle Dick Monahan, who owns the golf station here in town, is there. My aunt Edna's there. I'm on it. Uh, Cal Reynolds is in it. Uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, that we watched back when we were kids. And uh, if, if you want a piece of history, uh, pick up a DVD over there. Mike did a great job uh, compiling it and in, in editing it. And, uh, and he's slow. You know how 8 millimeter is. It's like watching the Keystone Cops out of the 1920s flickers. And so he slowed it up so that you can actually see the sleds as they fly by. You can see the numbers. You can actually see some of the drivers. And so uh, I urge anybody. And this is for the Hall of Fame. This is uh, going towards the Hall of Fame, the museum, and uh, Vintage Love and Snowmobile, who uh, met the podcast that Mike has. Yeah, uh, it, it's helping out three different venues by buying this DVD. So, and, and you got something, uh, you got a piece of history there. Anything you want to add, Mike? Sure, yes, there's over two, almost uh, two and a half hours worth of content on this DVD. And what we did is we would, anytime we saw someone that we recognized, we would freeze it. We would talk about that first, any history, there's a lot of history on there. Any exciting moments on the track, we would try to slow down for some slow mos Like I said, it's almost two and a half hours worth of content, the time capsule from the early 70s. Um, and like you said, the profits are divided three ways between the Hall of Fame, Train Smoke, Snowmobile Museum, and my Vintage Snowmobile podcast that I do every week. Um, also, for people who are viewing, we've been live streaming over here. Uh, anyone watching on the live stream, you can also order one by mail. There are, there are details in the, in the uh, description. Uh, but the post office gets a pack as well. It's an extra five dollars to ship that to your home. But uh, yeah, if you're here, fifteen dollars. The DVD is yours, and you're supporting all of the three things that uh, we talked about. And thank you in advance for your support on that. Fifteen. I was getting twenty. <laughs> okay. Well, we owe five dollars to people that pay twenty. <laughs> Larry Behrman has got another thing he wants to say. The mind is. The mind is. Finally starting to work a little bit. I think there's one thing that every guy has forgot to say in all these ceremonies from day one until right now. I want to thank all the diehards that showed up every, every weekend hoping that would be their day of glory. And I want a big hand for them because if it wasn't for them, none of us would be here. Thank God. Now, Larry came up and wanted to know if he's like, I want to say one more thing. You know what? These guys can talk all day if they want. This is what it's for. It's for those guys sitting there. And uh, this is all we do it for, is, is for these uh, pioneers. So uh, anything anybody else has got to add, just come on up and add, because... Uh, uh, you know, you know, you're going home, and, uh, and, and unfortunately, probably some of you people are a long ways off, and, and we may not, you know, get you back here. So, uh, 
this is the time to say anything at all. And yeah, and uh, also Paul just pointed out, uh, don't forget the Lancaster Motel is putting on the after party for the inductee uh, present and past. And so please go down there after the show and uh, get a little bite and uh, mingle and uh, a little camaraderie uh, amongst y'all. And we'll be down later. We're going to pick up, but we'll be down later. So if you'd hang, oh, we, oh yeah, we got to do the 50-50 drawing. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, and Mike just hit me with the, we've got a six-DVD set. If anybody's interested in watching all of our inductions, uh, if this is the sixth induction that we did. We've got DVDs on all of them. So the people that you see on the wall, if you want to watch them as they get their plaques and, 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 and watch the speeches that they made and stuff, some of these guys, get the DVDs because it's all on there. Every single induction has been has been recorded. So uh, we have a six DVD set. How much is that, Mike? Okay, $60 plus five to ship, but it's a piece of history. Uh, yeah, and Mike has got bonus videos where he uh, talks to the inductees. He had interviews with all of them. And, uh, you know, the, after after you you get away from the camera sometimes, there's a lot of information that these guys didn't remember to say that they, they say on these uh, little interviews that Mike does after. And uh, you can learn a lot from the history of this sport by, by getting these DVDs. And that one was the uh, the Grand Prix in the in the Malone race. So uh, please feel free to, to go over and pick those up. Anything you want to say, Mike? Yeah, one other comment about the six DVD set. Uh, episode six is being recorded as we speak by our friend Greg over here. So it's going to take me a little while to edit that. If you if we're taking pre-orders is what we're doing. So if you do a pre-order today, I, I my promise to you is to get it out to you by Halloween to have it edited and finished the whole. 60, 6 DVD set with all of the inductions, plus interviews and other bonus footage, a lot of information on there. And we thank you in advance for your support on that. The other thing I would add on that is the profits that we're making from the 6 DVD set as well as, as, well as the other deck are being divided three ways between Crane Snowmobile Museum, the Hall of Fame, and the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast that I do. And we thank you in advance. Thank you, Mike. Mike works hard to do these. And, uh, Nobody works harder on this stuff than Mike, so, you know. Um, all right, so you got to put All right, the uh, winning ticket is 780 -2202. Right here. Four digits, two, two, zero, two. <laughs> I got beat, too. <laughs> My friend Bruce Horvath uh, and a fellow board member wants to say a few words. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, showing up today and making this big success again, six years in a row. And take a moment to thank the backbone behind this organization, Paul Crane and Mins Broker. Let's have a hand for Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Yeah, so uh, this actually, I guess, concludes our induction ceremony. And uh, Mike LaPierre needs some time to set up inside the museum. Uh, well, it actually concludes our outside portion of it. Uh, we're going to go inside. We're going to have the inductees go in uh, and stand there while we unveil them on the wall. Uh, their families, please come in and, and watch this. And then if you want to have photos taken in front of your plaques and, and things like that, uh, stay as long as you need.
Yeah. Okay. So we just get situated here. We're going to have the unveiling. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to the camera. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. So yeah, we're going to have the unveiling in here in just a moment for the new inductees. And thank you, Lacey, so much. For, thank you so much for that, Lacey. We appreciate it. And you are very welcome. We appreciate your viewing. Hope it came in well at home. And uh, yeah, we very much appreciate it. So while we're waiting, we'll take a quick look at uh, all the snowmobiles here in the museum, Crane Snowmobile Museum, 172 Main Street, in Lancaster, New Hampshire. If you're ever in the area, come on by. It is by appointment only, so you want to call in advance if you see you're going to be coming through Lancaster. Call in advance, make arrangements to come in and check out the museum. It is very much worth a look. And if you're able to hang with us here just a few minutes, we're going to have the unveiling of the new uh, for the new inductees. All right, here it is, folks. Drum roll, please. Well, actually, 
actually, if you want to get in front of the camera now, we can do a quick interview. If you want to make a few quick comments about, because you know, my name is Ryan Matt. I was just inducted and just thought you have about being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Any memories that you have? I want to get you right up close to the camera for for good audio. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Ryan. My name is Ronnie Matt. Thank you for reminding me. My name is Ronnie Matt. <laughs> Uh, I was just inducted to the Automobile Hall of Fame. Automobile racer for probably 20 years. I had a wonderful time to it. Automobile racing, a lot of work. Very, very much impressed. Uh, I would be considered among some of the great racers that we had back here in the Northeast. Uh, really, really thanks to the Museum. Bruce, uh, all being a part of keeping this thing together. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful sport. And I think it's for the spectators, the sponsors, the people to uh, keep this thing going. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Cool deal. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going out to. So, uh, is it okay if it's uh, a Yeah, in just a moment here, we're going to have the unveiling. Get some more comments coming out. Here we go. Yeah, thank you so much, Lacey, for all the great comments. We really appreciate that. Yeah, we're very happy, Lacey, that you're able to view that in real live and in real time while he was being inducted. It was a great time here if you were in person, and we're glad that uh, you're able to enjoy that in your home. Drum roll, please. Thank you. 
Okay. Don't get a lot of people making comments in here. That's all right. Yeah. 
Just, yeah, my name is Butch, and so whenever you're ready. Yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations. That was great. Cool deal. Yeah, nice to meet you. All right, folks, this concludes our broadcast day. Oh, wait, we've got some comments coming in. All right. So uh, give our best to Paul and Midge. We absolutely will do that. And, uh, oh, Lacey, yeah. I hope you're able to see that uh, that interview we did with your dad. Glad you're so proud of him, as, as well you should be. Um, yeah, hopefully the audio came over on that. Let me know, Lacey, how the audio was, because there's a lot of background noise, a lot of people in this room, and hopefully that you're able to hear him speaking, because that's that's what we're going to put on the DVD uh, for an interview with him. Uh, and we thank you so much, Lacey, for, for viewing this live. We really appreciate it. And with that, this concludes our broadcast day. Thank you, everyone, so much for viewing. Um, this Hall of Fame, Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, just gets bigger and better, more wonderful every year. And... Um, we thank you for, for being a part of it. Uh, the viewers, the attendees, the, the inductees, the organizers, everyone. Uh, it's just a wonderful experience. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day.